Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. I woke up this morning with the laws on my mind Watching the days and months pass like flies Lord, help me understand the days and time Save my soul, I don't want you to let me go Teach me how to walk, teach me how to talk Teach me how to understand, teach me how to be a man Teach me how to be the flesh, teach me how to pass the test You only gave me one breath, life and death The ways of my life, it just get the best of me But I know one thing, it won't be the death of me You gave me will, but the will to fight I walk by faith and not by sight As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for the greatest day that I will rest Hope to see God on the other end Praying to forgive me of all my sins I got precepts Say what, say what I got precepts on my mind Come on. I got precepts I got what?
Serving the kingdom, you think you can see when it's coming? It's building, it starts from within you. And the sound with a roar and the thunder, we add into bone with the flesh and the sin. You blow the breath upon you, purging all the evil. Beckon to the people till they get their leaders, slaying all the eagles till the fall of Edom. And no, we ain't write it, just call it and read it. You sin on the front, we just say what we see, and we only out seeking the chosen of Isaac. Our eyes ain't light, you ain't think that we see us. Putting it work like they just didn't see us. They give us credit on none of our labors, and they'll be trembling with terrible fear when they witness the strangeness of our salvation. Gotta put our work in Israel The kingdom walls come by observation Gotta get us out of this hell We must rise up, our nation Don't you know that the kingdom's within you The kingdom's within you Don't you know that the kingdom's within you The kingdom's within you I battle, I wrestle, 
flesh trying to kill me I'm screaming for help but it seems no one hears me Frustration, tribulation, lacerating my spirit Whole armor equipped with much study, I did it If you come to serve the Lord, prepare for temptation If not, Satan is waiting to devour Like a raven, this wolf hit quick like a red rag to a bull Since this evil bull pull has the mind of a fool when trials come, trials come, think it not strange. When you go and do things, remember there's an escape. Fleeing from sin like the serpent that slid is abstain from the sin. The sin that's within us deliver, deliver, deliver through scriptures. Thorns that buffet, Christ's grace is sufficient. Gotta put a work in Israel. Shalom family, peace and blessings to you. Good evening, good evening. Peace and blessings to you, to each and every single one of you. Uh, we'll start shortly, so that we get a quick audio check. Praises to the most side. We're good. All right. All right. Let us rise and face the east. Sisters, cover your head. Brothers, uncover your heads. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth, we give you thanks and honor for the privilege to be called the sons of the living God. We thank you each and every day for thy loving patience and kindness towards us. We continue to ask you to fill us with thine Holy Spirit, Father. We ask you to guide us with thy, with thy word so that as we come back to you and repent, we can continue in your counsel doing your will and speaking your words unto our salvation through faith in thy son, Jesus the Christ. We pray that you edify your people who are about to receive thy word. Let it be for our learning as much as it is for our action, O Father. Help us endure in our walk to righteousness. Continue to place light on the brothers and sisters who are looking to keep thine laws, statutes, and commandments and faith in Christ. It is in his name that we pray to you, Father. Amen. Oh, my camera. Oh, so. All right, we good. Y'all can see me? Yeah. Okay, all praises, all praises. Uh, I hope the audio is good, video is good. Everybody watching online. How y'all doing tonight? Everybody good? Whatever, this is 
that delay is, is so crazy. You just gotta, yeah. We'll start. <laughs> Shalom, family. Hey, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it, man. Uh, the title of the class, Benzion. What's the title again, brother? What's the title, Benzion? The title of the day, the night class is "Put a Knife to Your Throat." Oh man, put a knife to your throat. <laughs> hey, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of y'all probably wondering like, what the hell? These brothers is tripping. What's going on with these brothers, man? Hey, but the Bible says, if any man speak, don't speak according to the organs of God, and that is a scripture that we're going to reference today <laughs> so we ain't bugged out our mind we ain't going crazy okay we in the spirit we in the spirit all praises <laughs> and go we ain't going rogue <laughs> yeah. we ain't going we ain't going rogue we ain't going uh uh contrary to the scriptures now we we gonna prove that all right uh let's start a revelation for Let's start at Revelations. Now, this class, believe it or not, came about uh, when I stood up and my knees started cracking. <laughs> I, I stood up and I said, man, heck, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm too young to be feeling this old, man. But I, I, I you know, after examining the matter uh, and, and then examining our people, uh, I kind of understand why and what we need to do, okay? And one of the first steps is is applying the scripture right here. Revelations 18, verse 4. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. They... I mean, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So the scripture says for us to come out of her so that we may not be partakers of her sins. It says, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Well, what's some of the what's some of the plagues that um our people fall victim to in this place? So the plagues we know uh this is this is um present and future tense here okay the plagues are to come is this is judgment to come okay but also while we're here is plagues things that's plaguing us uh based upon deuteronomy 28 and i think is what verse 67 hold on hold on 47 61 61 one of them yeah <clears throat> I get it for you right quick. Deuteronomy yes, chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-one. Yeah. I also, think it's sixty-one. Every, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse sixty-one. Mm -hmm. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So we know some of these plagues that are befalling this place here, or uh, as is mentioned coming out of her meaning Babylon, okay, we're falling victim to some of the plagues that she's falling victim to. Why? Because we're following her. We're intermingled. We're co co-inhabitants. Okay. We've we've uh we've assimilated to the customs of these people. I, and listen, I traveled this whole earth while while being in the United States Navy. I've been everywhere from Iceland to uh what they call the Middle East to um Stint in Japan, we went, we all been all over the place, right? And one thing I seen was how different nations eat, but how different nations regard this place here. And a lot of them try to keep America and their westernized customs at, a, at arm's length because, um, you know, they're insatiable, meaning you can't, they can't be filled, right? Whether it be sin, whether it be robbing or murdering or eating, okay? Um, so some of the things that we got to keep in mind in, in this place here, we can't partake of the customs of these, these people, man. Every, if you have cable or if you go online, it's food channels on every station, man. It's advertising for foods throughout everywhere. 
every commercial, regardless of what you watch, if you watch a commercial, it's gonna talk about a double burger, a double cheese, bacon burger. It's gonna talk about something in regards to food. Okay, many award-winning food shows, and you know, this is the age of decadence. It's different ages in the establishing of a nation. And this right now is the age of decadence where it's food and entertainment and all those things are at the forefront of everything, right? So understanding that, we gotta, we gotta come to the realization that the things that these people are doing here, we can't necessarily do as a nation. We gotta come out of that, okay? A lot of us, majority of us, based on statistics, are the biggest, fattest, uh, <laughs> well-nourished, overly nourished people on, on this planet, okay? And that's not our custom. It's not our custom. We have the, we, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have the worst rates of obesity amongst men, women, and children than any other nation, okay? Than any other nation as a whole, all right? Uh, people say, well, what about the Samoans? No, we guess what? We're bigger than them. <laughs> we are we are we're fatter than them. I want y'all to understand that. Okay? And that's a problem, man. Our foreparents, they they would fight for days, weeks, months, years on end. They will they will wield the sword so much that the sword will, the blood will coagulate around their dog on hand, attaching their hand to the sword. Some of y'all, y'all walk up the steps. Some of us, I'm just, not y'all, some of us, we walk up the stairs and you get winded. You can't take two steps and you, uh, uh, you breathing heavy. Nah, man, our four parents weren't like that, okay? Because they understood the scriptures and we're gonna understand them after today. So we gotta make some changes. So yes, it's gonna start with our spirit, yes, but physically as well, man, we gotta make some changes, myself included. Because as I get older, I stood up and heard my knees popping and crying. I'm like, what the, what is this? <laughs> I looked at my knee and asked, why am I thus? What, is <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? What's going on here? Okay, I'm too young to be feeling this, this old, man. I, I'm feeling like I'm 80 years old. All right? So I cut me first. So if you get cut by this class, hey, I was cut first. It starts with me. All right? Uh, let's go to first, first Chronicles, man. Let's, let's get an example of our four parents and, and how they, <clears throat> how they, uh, were disciplined and were able to, uh, fight for hours on end. Okay. We had many mighty, um, warriors come from our lineage, you know, hey, I, I guarantee you if majority of our people were in shape. I, get, I, I bet you to be less uh, gun violence. That's the easy way out. That's, <laughs> that's the easy way out. They're like, all right, I ain't gonna fight, man. I ain't trying to get tired. I don't want no. I don't want no sweat on my clothes. I don't want. It's just. I'm just being crazy, but um, you know, people still gonna try to murder each other. That's just the nature of us, right? But uh, we definitely need to look at the history as to our foreparents. Understand they used to fight. Remember uh, David's valiant men, three of them, went through the host of the Philistines, got the water for David, and what, was able to take it back without spilling a drop? That takes stamina, something called stamina. A lot of us, we, we can't even spell that word. Stamina. <laughs> we ain't got none. Absolutely no stamina. All right? Uh, read what you got. You got your chapter. 12 and 8. 12 and 8. This is going. This is going through uh, uh, David's men. C come on. First Chronicles chapter twelve verse eight. And of the G Gadites, they are separated themselves unto David, into the whole, to the wilderness, man of might. So, and did, of so, so, what tribe is this? This is the tribe of Gad. Y'all seen um, what's what's that movie where they were running, um, Apocalypto. Man, even the big heavy set guy was gone. They were running for days, it looked like, chasing a little Jaguar or Jaguar, whatever he called himself. Okay, they had stamina. They were mighty men. But read it from the top. 
and of the Gadite, they are separated themselves unto David, and to the whole, in the in the wilderness, mighty might, man of might, and man of war fit for the battle, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and were as swift as roads up on the mountain. You see that? These men were swift as rows on the mountain. They, they, listen, they were swift in shape. They were fit for the battle. They were ready. They were prepared for the battle. I tell you what, man, a lot of, a lot of brothers be so tough, but, uh, you know, myself included, somebody, somebody hit me right now. Ain't much I can do, but hold on to him to the, <laughs> <until> the least <police> go. <laughs> for real, man. We're not in shape. We we just so out of it. I'm telling you, it's it's bad. It's it's horrible, right? Because we're the best athlete athletes and everything. It's just a lack of discipline that got us here, right? It's a lack of discipline that got us here. But I guarantee you, hey, somebody hit me right now. All I can do is hold them. I ain't got too much for you. <laughs> ain't got much for you right now. Okay, we got to return back to. The days of old, man, how our, four, our four prints, how they conducted themselves, how they were. Hell, even Moses, when he was, what, when he was about to die, his his strength, what did it say? It's, it mentioned something about his strength. It's in Deuteronomy. He was, he was in good health. Deuteronomy 34. Deuteronomy 33. 34. Hold on, it's 30. It's 33 and 7, 34. 34. 34, 34 and 7. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. So Moses was 120. You look at <clears throat> uh, the age, our age of, of life expectancy is what, 70? Mm -hmm. They want you, they want you 70, 75, something like that. They want you to work all the way up until you 60 something and then give you a few years <laughs> until you croak. That's, cra that's crazy when you think about it. They want you to work to, how, what's the age of uh, Social Security? What, 65 or something like that? Mm -hmm. yeah. So they want you to work to 65 in the age, the, uh, well, our our life expectancy is like 66, between 66 to 70 years old. So once you're done working, you can go on and die. That's what they, that's, that's their mindset, okay? And meanwhile, they're going to fuel you and pump you full of the worst things that they can. OK, to ensure that that is the case, that when you get up, when you get in your 60s or 70s, it's, it's, hey, it's time for the upper room. OK, read on. His eyes was not dim, nor his natural force abated. Abated. His natural force wasn't stopped. OK, his eyes weren't dim. He still was. A, he had his wits about him. That's rare. This this is celebrated nowadays. If somebody's like a hundred and something years old, they they celebrate them. This is the oldest person in the world. They put them, you know, put them on camera because it's it's abnormal. It's abnormal. Okay, for a, a, a husband and wife, I seen a Jake husband and wife. They live to be like a hundred and two, hundred and three, or something like that. Together, that's that's rare. Okay. That's a rarity. Why? Because this system here that God told us to come up out of is constructed to kill you. <laughs> it's constructed to have you as this workforce. And when it's done with you, to kill you. The pharmaceutical companies, they're not here to heal you. They're here to sustain you. Understand, it's a big difference. They're here to keep you along until they can't use you as a workforce or use you, period. Then you, you know, they send you to a home and then off you go. All right. So we got to put it in our minds now to get ourselves together. Majority of us, majority of us in Israel, we talk about the high holy days and eating and stuff like that. We are the, the largest, <laughs> largest people on this earth, man. And I found statistics to prove it. Now, I'm not just saying that based upon something I thought or something that just came to mind. This is proven by sheer numbers. The Hispanics, the so-called Hispanics, the so-called Blacks, the so-called Natives, Native Indians, okay? They are the huge, they are the largest 
uh, they have the largest rates of obesity ever. All right. So the Bible tells us how we need to eat, what we need to do, how we need to uh, um, conduct ourselves, what we need to eat, how we need to eat. Right. All that's lying out in the scriptures. But for the most part, we don't we don't we really don't adhere to that. Or we do. OK, but we overly nourish ourselves. All right. So let's go to Sirach 31. We're going we're gonna to head to Sirach, man. I ain't going to hold y'all too long either. This is class I, you know, came about. Most I put it in my spirit to bring this thing out. Sirach 31 and read verse, uh, start at verse 16. Sirach 31, verse 16. Eat as it becometh a man. Those, those things which are set before thee. So the scripture says, eat as it becometh a man, those things that sit before thee, right? So this is this is this is a rock instructing his son. Okay, how to deal, how to eat. He's telling him, remember this. Okay, eat as it becometh a man. Do this and do that. This is instruction being given here. This is some sound instruction that we need to give, give ear to. Okay, read on. And devour not, lest thou be hated. And when you sit, and you consider what's in front of you, okay, you're gonna do what? You're gonna consider the people, consider the people that's amongst you, and you're not gonna eat up all the doggone food, <laughs> right? You're gonna make sure everybody has enough. Everybody eats, right? Come on. Leave off first for a manner's sake, and be not unsatiable, unsatiable, lest thou offend. So have patience. Leave off first for manner's sake. <clears throat> it's good manners to feed the guests. It's good manners to feed uh, those that are, are hungry or less fortunate before yourself. Okay. It says, leave off all first for manner's sake, and be not unsatiable, lest thou offend. What does it mean to be unsatiable? Unsatiable. Because this is what America is breeding. So am I going to pull it up? Yeah, I got it. All right. Okay. Uh, of an part? appetite, of an appetite or desire, impossible to satisfy. So of an appetite or a desire. So this goes for the spirit and flesh. We're unsatiable. You can't feel it. All right. One that sits down. I remember my grandfather used to tell me this story about his cousin. They used to celebrate wicked days, hell days and things of that nature. And he would sit down and eat everything at the table before anybody else could grab anything. Hated amongst the people. They're like, man, don't invite that nigga. <laughs> don't invite him. Okay, but this is this is some of our people. Their appetite, you can't it can't be filled. That's not our custom. This is not how we used to be. This is how we are now. You said you said some Popeye's chicken sandwiches in front of us. Brothers and sisters, they're gonna they gonna go they gonna risk life and limb trying to okay. Come on. When thou sittest among many, reach not thy hand out first of all. So don't, you ain't got to be the first one to eat. Doing that shows you lack, you lack control of your spirit. You lack discipline. Okay. Um, grab a little. Most brothers, when they go to eat, they feel they play all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Y'all seen that before? Mm. They go to eat and they plate is like a dead going mountain of food. And then you looking around, you're like, man, all these people got to eat. They don't care. Okay. Come on. Very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. And he fetched not his wind short upon his bed. So very little is sufficient. Very little. All right. The issue with us, we want a whole lot. 
Everybody eating. So think about this. Every meal is a big meal. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Whatever you have. The time you eat it, how much you eat. Okay? Those things are completely off. The scripture says very little is sufficient for a man well nourished. Okay? Very little. All right? Not going to a buffet eating 12 plates. 13 plates. You eat 12 plates for the 12 tribes. <laughs> you had the buffet eating 12 plates for the 12 tribes. You go, <laughs> you try to eat 144,000 calories a day, you know, just to represent 144,000 calories. Come on, man. We gotta, we gotta get better because we're not, we will never be equipped for the battle. I don't care how much we show ourselves to be soldier, war, whatever. We won't be equipped for the battle if we don't first get our spirits together and then get our, our flesh together. We gotta get our bodies together, man. You can't even take us serious. Brothers sitting out at camp, they, 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 uh, the little girdle for their garment hanging underneath their belly. Garments flying all over the place. Gut just hanging out there. Everybody being, it's a million man march led by their guts. <laughs> Everybody just moving forward quickly, led by led by their dog on bellies. That's crazy. Has to change. Very little is sufficient. Come on. Sound sleep coming from a uh, moderate eat. So if you want to eat, if you want to sleep well, you got to do what? You got to eat well. Eat in moderation. Eat in moderation. Okay. I'm not going to get into the argument of. Uh, Eating just uh, grass, you know, grass and shrubs and juniper roots and berries and, uh, you know, twigs and things of that nature. And then eating meat. I ain't going to go into the difference between those two. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to get on gonna get on those that do, you know. Because, you know, as long as they eating, as long as they nourish. Come on. He rises early and his wits are with him. So that brother or sister that achieves sound sleep by moderate eating, they get up early. This is another thing. Our people get up. I, I, hey, listen, they will get up in just enough time to take a shower, take a shower, brush the teeth, and head out to work. They'll pop up real quick just to, just to get themselves together for work, and then they'll head out. Majority, majority of, of successful people they actually wake up earlier than they're supposed to wake up. Okay, they have time to reflect. Um, you know, once they've had sound sleep, things of that nature, right? They can do a little bodily exercise and, you know, go on about their day. But for the most part, our people, we pop up. Now, if I'm lying, let me know, y'all. We mm -hmm. wake up in just enough time. We hit, that, we hit the snooze button a couple times. We wake up with just enough time to get ourselves prepared, get our clothes on, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe grab something to eat, but most of us don't. We'll, we'll, we'll get some on the way out, get, hit some fast food spot or something like that, and then head into the job. Right? Is that a normal day? Yes? No? Alexa, wake me up in another five minutes. <laughs> 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 hey, because I, I know when, you know, when I did have to make the commute and stuff like that, man, I'll wake up right in enough time to get there on time, but I never woke up early enough to really, you know, reflect on my day, go over some scripts, things of that nature. But luck, luckily, I had an hour drive or an hour and a half drive where I could, you know, deal with brothers, answer questions, field questions go over scriptures and stuff like that with my drive, with my commute. That's what I would get in there. But like, for the most part, our people, they don't, they really don't get up on time. They get up in time, not on time. They get up in time enough to get those things done to get out the house, you know? Try mixing it up. Change, change, change the diet, change what you're consuming, how you're consuming it, what time you're consuming it, so you can sleep well, right? Get a little exercise in. I mean, we ain't talking about being no gym rat now. There's some gym rats. All they want to do is pump iron. You know what I'm saying? 
Hey, 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 then, hey I, I know a brother right now who's Israelite. He say, he say, at least he say so. Uh, you know, the brother stay in the gym for like five hours. So he'll work all day, then he'll go to the gym for five hours. You can't tell me that brother study. I don't I don't know what he's doing. He, he ain't sitting down reading no scripts like that. You you at work for eight to ten hours, and you turn around for five hours and you go to the gym. Something wrong there. Yeah. You know, hey, well, that's priorities, priorities, but it's all it, it all comes down to discipline, right? It all comes down to discipline. But read on. But the pain of watching and collar and pain of the belly are with an unsatiable man. Pain of watching, collar, and pains of the belly. Okay. Pains of watching. It says collar. Look that word up for me, Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. Watch this. And it says, and pains of the belly are with an unsatiable man. Why? Y'all ever ate to the point where it's like, it hurts? You're like, man, I can't even walk. I can't even do nothing. You eat so much dog on food, it hurt. <laughs> okay, then you go to sleep. Then you want to go to sleep. And then get upset because you got acid reflux or something like that. Uh, you want me to read color? Yes, sir. Uh, color. <laughs> Put it on screen right quick. Uh, All right. It'll show up in a second. Uh, color in medieval science and medicine, one of the four bodily humors, uh, uh, humors identified with bile and believed to be associated with a peevish or irascible temperament. So it says bile or erivous or irascible temperament. Right. That's what you said? Right. Yes, sir. So that bile is that reflux, that, that, uh, stomach, that stomach acid coming back up. Okay. So a lot of a lot of brothers and sisters have acid reflux because of what they eat and when they eat and how they eat. Okay, and these things are these things are a direct result of an unsatiable man or woman. Okay, unsatiable. All right, so don't get mad. Don't get mad when you you know you can't sleep because you know you got that acid reflux and stuff like that. They call it acid reflux. The Bible call it cold. Okay. These are these are some of the things that plague us throughout the course of the night. That's why you can't get sound sleep. All right, come on. And if thou has been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shall have rest. And if you've been forced to eat, as our four parents were many a times, okay, during the time of the uh, Greeks, they were forced to worship Bacchus and and uh, you know make sacrifices unto them and eat and eat and eat okay in a time of rome that was a pastime for them they had rooms where they would eat and just vomit they had vomit rooms so once they eaten and drunk into their full they were actually going to these rooms vomit that stuff up so they can keep the party going okay and that's a lot of <laughs> a lot of our people they they do the same thing they just don't vomit it they just leave it in there. <laughs> they just keep eating. Eat, 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 eat. That's it. Okay. All they do is eat. Uh, what we at? Verse 22. Come on. My son, hear me and despise me not. And, and at the last thou shalt find as I told thee. In all thy works be quick. So shall there no sickness come unto thee. So in all thy works, it says, in all thy works, be quick. Be, be, be quick to what? Be quick to hear, be quick to do. Because if you apply these things, the scripture says no sickness will come upon you. Okay? A lot of our people are sick. We have the highest rate of diabetes. People losing limbs and things of that nature because they want fried, ju juicy fried chicken or um you know, they want to eat the wrong things. Majority of our people, gout. Gout is a major, major thing in our society. Okay? Because I'm telling you, Northern Kingdom, they love their pork. They love their pork. Y'all ever been to, uh, uh, the, like, some, some of the South American countries? Rebecca, I know you have. Yeah. 
Don't they love their pork, brother? Yeah. It's like it's like a drug to them or something, man. <laughs> okay, so they, you know, I so-called blacks as well, walking around with gout and things of that nature, swollen ankles, cankles, and you know, saying swollen knees. Got them BMW bodies. Bodies made wrong. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hey, we walk around here. We, I'm telling you, just looking at us now as a people. I seen a picture just the other day. This, this, um, it was a, a bigger, bigger Jake man. Her feet was so black, and her toenails was curling because she could. I guess she couldn't reach down and even clip her own toenails. We had brothers so big, they wives had to like wipe them and do things for them. These, these are able-bodied brothers. Okay. That's them. our four parents ain't ain't have to do things like that, right? Give me um. Uh, let's go from there. So the key the key to uh, sound health is what? What's the key to sound health according to the scriptures? In in, in, in peaceful sleep. Moderation. Eating in moderation. Eating in moderation. Right. See me, me personally. Uh, I don't eat throughout the course of the day. Like it'll be a the day will go by, and it'll be five or six o'clock until I eat something, and I realize, man, I ain't eating nothing all day. You know what I do after that? Lay down. Nah, I don't lay down. I go get something to eat. <laughs> but when I eat, I eat. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I'm trying to make up for breakfast, lunch, and everything love, that I love miss. Time. So you exactly. Open. And then by the time I realize, man, or if I decide to cook something, by the time, you know, the food is ready and prepared, it's almost close to time to go to sleep. So the food ain't gonna fully digest within your system. It takes time for your body to process the things that you consume throughout the course of the day. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of us, we wonder why, man, hey, I, I don't eat that much, but I'm gaining a lot of weight. Well, it's a method to that madness. Okay? We got to eat right. We got to eat on schedule. Eat moderately. Okay? And this don't help either. Uh, 1 Timothy 4. Read verse 8. First Timothy chapter four verse eight. For good bodily exercise profited little. Read that again. For good bodily exercise profit profit little. Read it one more time. For good bodily exercise profit little. Take your time. Take your time. Look at that. Look at that verse. You said verse eight. Yeah, verse eight. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, yeah. For bodily ex, my bad. <laughs> For bodily exercise, profit little. My bad. So the scripture says, bodily exercise profited little. So if something profits, is it a good or bad thing? If it profits little, is bodily exercise bad? Is it good? It's good. It's good. Okay. Nah, it says it says for um bodily exercise property little. There ain't gonna be much getting you gonna get from it. You're gonna get a little from it, ain't gonna be much. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Profit is profit. So profit is profit. It, it, elaborate, elaborate. A little profit is better than no profit. Okay, so a little exercise, so we get we can equate that profit there. So for a little exercise, it's better than no exercise, right? Right. Okay. Now it ain't talking about you 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 a gym rat sitting in the gym for five hours out of the day. Thirty right. minute walk here and there. Yeah, get get your walk in, stretch, get your you know what I'm saying. Hey, you might want to lift a little bit, do a little time in there. But that time super, shouldn't supersede your time with the Most High God, getting an understanding. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, or any, any anything else of that nature. 
but it does profit. There is profit in exercise. Okay. Just don't, just don't get vain. Okay. You, you, you in the mirror doing curls for the sake of curls, just to look at your arm grow. That's not what this life is about. It's about good health, not vanity. Okay. Cause there's many, as many of men right now, um, what's the brother, the brother lifts such heavy weights. He can't even walk now. One of the biggest heavyweight uh, lifters, oh, brother can't even yeah, walk. Yeah, he's all broken. He broken, man. He he, he walking on he walking on uh yeah he walking um, on crutches. Yeah, former Mister like like three. Mister Olympia, Mr. he was Mister Olympia, yeah. Olympia like three or four times. Yeah, you know, he can't can't even walk. He was like a, a a cop. Right, he was a cop. Yeah, exactly. We know all this information about him. We can't even remember his name. It don't matter. <laughs> Ronnie, don't Ronnie matter. Coleman. Ronnie Coleman. There you go. There you go. There you go. Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> hey, that brother can't even walk, man. That dude was, he had the biggest physique. Dude was huge. Stayed in the gym forever. He's still in the gym. He got those uh, uh, detective baby leg legs now. His lower body, smaller than the top body. You know what I'm saying? But hey, he's still in the gym. He get up early in the morning like he's still competing. Destroying his body. That profit is little. Okay? But there still is a profit to it. So we got to take advantage of it. Right? Um, so we read Surah 31 to examine how not to eat. Right? Go to Proverbs 23 real quick. Watch this. Because it's an addiction. It's an addiction as well. Some people just, they're naturally addicted to eating. Right? Proverbs 23, start at verse 2 for me. Proverbs chapter 20, 23, verse 2. And put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite. So the scripture says, put a knife to your throat if you be a man given to your appetite. Okay? Especially amongst a, a ruler. Or <laughs> in this case, amongst a ruler or, or uh, someone of high status. Or anybody. Okay? Jump down to, um, jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. By and by the truth, fact, jump, I'm sorry, jump to verse uh, I think it's verse 20. Verse, Proverbs 23, verse 20. Be not among wine bibbers, among righteous eaters of flesh. So the scripture tells you, don't be amongst wine. It says wine bibbers. So what's a wine bibber? Someone drinking wine in moderation. Someone drinking, someone drinking wine, but in moderation. Uh, I think it's, he's that's the person that get drunk. Person that, oh, he 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 oh he drank too much. This is, right, this is somebody to get toe down. They they get drunk as I don't know what. Okay, they get drunk. They it might start off as uh, remember Sirach thirty one talks about showing your valiantness in the wine. Okay, and then it goes into uh, drunkenness, right? This, uh, that's what a wine bibber is. What, my, uh, give me Sirach 31. We'll read it. We'll read it. Uh, Sirach 31, 27. Rock 31, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Wine is a good, wine is as good as life to a man if it be drunk, drunken, moderate. So wine as is food is good to a man, right? Mm. If it's consumed in moderation. If it's consumed in moderation, right? Come on. What life is then to a man that is without wine? So, hey, wine is made for us to drink. Okay, come on. Well, it was made to make man glad. It was made to make you glad. It was made to give you a little buzz, not get drunk, but make you feel good. Right? Come on. Wine measurably drunk 
is in, in season bring it gladness of the heart and cheer cheerfulness of the mind so wine measurably drunk in season so you watching what you're drinking first and foremost why so that you don't get drunk or become a wine bibber right it says in this season it's a specific time to drink mm -hmm. you're not waking up at 9 at 9 a.m reaching for your strong drink reaching for your wine okay remember in acts it's uh they mock they mock the uh uh they mock the uh 12 saying that uh they were drunk right and Peter, I think Peter said, isn't it but the ninth hour? They're not drunk. Okay. It's time, it's a it's a time and place to drink. <laughs> All right. Some brothers pick the time to be when they wake up and they'll stop when they go to sleep. I've seen I've seen them. I, I've known I've known many of them. I used to get uh clown. They used to be like, hey, you just gonna have that one drink? Yep. Exactly. Just this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sip on this right here. I'm good. Okay, read on. But wine dr drunken with excess make it bitterness of the mind with brawling and quarreling. You see what happened when you drink a lot of wine? Drink a lot of strong drink? Make you bitter, crawling, want to fight. Okay, people wonder why these establishments that set up to do business on the Sabbath, where they consume alcoholic beverages and things of that nature, why is always something going on? Okay, because they consume, they overly consume strong drink. Read on. Drunkenness increases the rage of a fool till he offends. It diminishes strength and make it wounds. It diminishes strength and make it wounds. They wake up all kinds of wounds on them. <laughs> They, they can't even tell you how they got them. Mm -hmm. And it says the minister's strength. You ain't in your full strength. You ain't in, the, in in your full mind when you're drunk. You don't have your faculties faculties about you. Okay, you barely walk. You can't think clearly. There's no sobriety there. All right, come on. Rebuke not thy neighbor at the wine and despise him not in his murder give him no give him no despiteful words and press not upon him with urging him to drink and we're not to urge anybody to keep drinking i've seen that quite often amongst israel they were all overly excited to bring strong drink in because you know for years they were told they couldn't so now they're going to buy as much strong drink as they can Pour it up. Let's pour it up. Oh, that's all you're going to drink? Man, drink some more. Here go a little bit more. Like it's hospitality. No, the scripture says don't urge your brother to drink. Okay? We're not to do that. Why? Because they might be pacing themselves and know that if they overly consume alcohol or wine or anything like that, that it might bring out something. <laughs> mm -hmm. It might bring the old man back. It might, they, hey, they, they might still off on somebody or something. Who knows? Okay. So when you're sitting back and you got your strong drink and you're sitting amongst your brothers and the brother say, right, let me get a cup of that. He drank his cup and you say, that's all you're going to drink? Man, get some more of this. You're urging on the drink at that point. We're not supposed to do that. And this happened too doggone often. Too often. It's the same way with food. Because it gives you comfort. It's like a comfort thing for us. Okay? People find comfort in alcohol and, and, and food and drugs and things of that nature. They find comfort in it. So they want, if somebody's there with them and in the midst of that, they want them to overly consume that thing because they want them to be comfortable too. That's, that's, that's a twisted mindset there. Twisted. Okay, jump back into Proverbs. Proverbs 23, verse 20. Be not among wine bibbers, so among riotous. Oh, hold on, so the scripture says, be not amongst wine bibbers. What's a wine bibber again, brothers? Drunkard. Drunkard. Drunkards. The scripture tells you to be not amongst them. We're committed not to be among wine bibbers. 
This is what they call Christ because he drunk he drunk wine. This is what they call Christ. Crazy. Come on. Among righteous eaters of flesh. And amongst righteous eaters of flesh. This ain't just talking about meat uh vegans. <laughs> Cause remember, uh the herb bearing fruits and things of that nature was made flesh to eat, to consume. So it's talking about the things that you consume, food. All right. They were made meat. Read on. For the drunkener and the gluttoner, glutton should come to poverty. And draws draw, drowsiness should Dr close drowsiness. Man, and drowsiness should clothe a man with rage. Rag, my brother. With rags. With so you're gonna be you're gonna be with rags. So uh that insatiable brother or sister that's constantly eating, okay, it's 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 an outcome that we we fell victim to. Okay, it says the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Why are they gonna come to poverty? Cause they want to get drunk all the time. Don't want to go to work. <laughs> Don't you know? Sometimes you know, they can't go to work. They might yeah. lose a job. Right, they spend all their money the on it. Right, it's the same thing with food though. I sat back and I look. I looked at like as far as fast food. Myself, that's why I say it starts with me first. I sat back and looked um, a few months ago, and we ate out so much. We spent so much money on just eating out because the food wasn't prepared. Right, the food wasn't prepared, and we just we was hungry at that point. So we was like, all right, just get it, just go. Not thinking about it. But I guarantee you, if you go and you print out your bank statement and you look at how many times you eat out, that thing, it would equal so much money that you, you would be upset with yourself. You'd be like, uh, damn, what the hell am I doing? Mm -hmm. You would be upset with yourself. Okay? But these be the same brothers and sisters who can't uh, make it to the Passovers and they can't save money for high holy days and they can't you know what I'm saying? Save money to pay their bills. Um, can't say, but but was sitting in the line to buy some Michael Jordan shoes. Like our priorities jacked the hell up, man. But if you go down, if you go down the list of your bank account, because you swiping and you check all the fast food that you didn't eat, not food that you went to the grocery store and got, fast food that you didn't eat, man, you'd be mad at yourself. Uh, highly upset. I know I was. I was pissed. I'm like, I'm spending how much on fast food? You don't think about it in a moment. I'm like, damn, this is somebody rent. <laughs> I'm spending rent money on <laughs> I'm spending somebody rent money on fast food. Come on, man. Somebody could be paying their rent how much money I spend. I'm putting myself on blast. Because I'm, hey, I, I can't say I'm fit for the battle. Spiritually, I, I could say that. But physically, I'm not. Physically, I'm not. I'm glad we don't got steps. Man, I'll be toe up trying to, <laughs> trying to walk up them steps, man. So I'm making some changes. I pray I pray this this class incite y'all to make some class, some changes too. Okay. Um, Jump over, jump over, jump over. Jump over to Proverbs 25. Watch this. Uh... Look at verse 16. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 16. As thou found honey, eat so much as is sufficient for thee. As thou be filled therewith and vomit it. So the Bible is very repetitive. I, I like to show uh, within a different, the different, um, time periods that they're just quoting the same thing over and over. Okay. Where do we just read this? In Sirach. You just read it in Sirach. Okay. So it's saying the same exact thing, the same exact thing uh, as the book of Sirach. No difference. Right. Let's drop that. Let's go to Ezekiel. Because a lot of 
a, a, listen, a lot of brothers and sisters, they change their diet based upon, um, you know, what it's, it's uh, hormones and they shooting up the, the meat and doing all kinds of crazy stuff we see on, on YouTube and all these different channels, pus coming out the meat and all this other stuff. So that's put a lot of brothers and sisters off eating meat, right? Put a lot of brothers and sisters off eating meat. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all, okay? I don't blame you. They, they, they eat meat once a year, and that's for uh, for Passover. I respect that, you know? I respect that. I, I But I know the most high, you know, he had respect on some meat offerings and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> He had respect on the meat offerings, man. He liked that good savior of, of meat cooking. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to Ezekiel 4. Let's understand that we got to understand something about our foods, though. Okay. Uh, start at verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 9. So Ezekiel's hey, now, life. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me do my precursor. Ezekiel's life was uh similar to what Israel, the whole nation of Israel would experience. Okay, his life was the embodiment of our trials and tribulations, things of that nature. Very similar, it, it was a similar to, to us. Okay, uh, start at verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 9. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley, barley and beans and lentil and uh, mel melt, mel melt, millet, 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 and fetches. And put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and nine and ninety days, ninety days shall thou eat thereof. So for that period, that, that would be their diet for three hundred and ninety-five days. Come on. And thy meat which thou shall eat should be by weight. 10, 20 shekels a day from time to time should I eat it. So your meat that you eat shall be from day to day and it should be measured, right? In moderation. We, didn't we read that earlier? Mm -hmm. Right. Come on. Thou shalt drink also water by measure. Hold on, that's a Kool-Aid, right? Thou shalt drink also <laughs> water by measure. That says pop. That's soda pop. That's, that's, that's soda, right? Thou shalt drink water. Thou shalt drink also water by measure. And six, the sixth part of an hen from the time, from time to time, should thou drink it. So drink from time it. to time. So throughout the day, you should drink water. You know, a lot of our people they don't drink water. You know, it's even worse. They 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 have their children drinking all the sugar, the sweetest stuff that they can drink in as, as well, all day, every day. And we wonder, listen, when you drink sweet, uh, you drink sugar added uh, fruit punches and things of that nature, you know, you, you're drinking your carbs for the day. So even though you don't eat a lot, you still can gain a lot of weight. It's gonna store those carbs as energy for later, even though it's not, the food that you're thinking about, it's going to be stored in that, those those fat cells. You drinking all your carbs for the day in two sittings. You drinking a big pitcher of Kool Aid, and then then you top it off with some with some uh, with some fried chicken and, and 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 everything else under the sun. Okay, and wonder why we get why we're so sick as a people. Our people are sick, man. Our people are sick. We have the worst everything. And we don't make it any better. <laughs> Come on. And thou shalt eat it as barley cake. And thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. So we should bake, we should bake our food with man's dung and drink water and measure our meat out in moderation, right? That's how we supposed to bake our breads and, and stuff, right? Well, man's dung, right? So we take dung. <laughs> we take we take man's dung and we, you know, gotta make some cakes. Pat, 
make some cakes and some pies and stuff and eat it like that, right? Because that's what the scripture says. Now somebody, hey, that, that, I guarantee you that's some kind of doctrine somewhere. Somebody, they, 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 they just take advantage of that right there. Read the next verse. <laughs> And the Lord said, even thus should the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I would drive them. So when we were scattered, we got to eat our breads defiled amongst the Gentiles. So as Ezekiel had to eat his bread literally there defiled, we would be in future, in future time, or uh, as prophecy dictates, we would eat our foods defiled amongst the Gentiles. So everything we uh, eat is equivalent to a man's dumb. Yep. Everything, everything we eat, whether it be uh, grass, roots, shrubbery, <laughs> you know, that rabbit food and carrots and all that stuff is defiled. It's not just the actual meat. Like, it's not just the cow and, and chicken. Nah, everything is defiled. Mm -hmm. You think you're getting away with it. Because you say you're going to eat healthy. Who told you what healthy is? When we examine what healthy, eating healthy is according to the scriptures, it's eating moderately according to the dietary law. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, from there, from here, we're going to go there to the dietary law to see just exactly what healthy foods are. Okay. Uh, read on. You said read on? Mm -hmm. Then it said, Ah, ah, a Lord, God, behold, my soul have not been polluted far from my youth up until up, even up till now, have I not eaten of that which died of itself or is torn in pieces, neither came there a bondable flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I, I have given the cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. So, all right. Don't use man's dung. Use cow's dung. You still need that bread, though. <laughs> you still need to fulfill that prophecy. Okay. So for how long, how long did he do this? 390 days. 390 days. Okay, and we would we would do the same 390 days, uh, all the way up until. All right, and it says amongst the Gentiles. That don't mean that this covenant pertains to them. By the way, I'm tired of people when they when they read Gentile, oh everything, yeah, oh yeah, this is the commandment for us and them. This this is this is commanded of us and and all the Gentiles. All right, let's go to Leviticus, chapter 11. So I'm going to incorporate my two, my two, uh, my so-called two um, uh, laws right here. Leviticus 11, start at verse 2. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, these are the beasts what shall be what shall eat among what ye shall eat among all beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So it says, whatsoever part of the hoof. Now it didn't say sprout from sprout from the ground. It says part of the hoof, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and his cloven footed and chew of the cud. So it chews the grass. See, this is how we get our protein. Our animals chew the grass and we eat the animals that chew the grass. It don't say eat the grass. It say, <laughs> it say we eat the animals that do so. Okay. It says, and chew of the cud among the beasts that shall you eat. What does it mean to chew the cud? The process and go back and they're breaking it down are you chewing it they chew it swallow it they got more than one stomach change yeah. they send the food to they regurgitate it 
So they so they constantly breaking their food down and chew it, swallow it back, chew it up, uh, you know, vomit it again, and chew it. That's why you always see a cow mm-hmm. with his mouth just going. He always, even when he reached down and, and got no new grass, okay? Because he chewed the cud. So anything that chews the cud, we can eat, right? Now does this mean we gonna we gonna make a big uh, 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 we gonna cook half a cow and just munch on that <laughs> munch on the whole half a cow? Nah, we gonna eat in moderation. They uh, based upon these people here. To be honest, you're supposed to only eat meat the size of your palm. That's what the that's what the word on the street is. Your meat doesn't doesn't supposed to exceed the the, the space of your palm. Y'all heard that before? That's one is one serving size. A lot of our people hadn't heard it. To them, one serving size is uh uh three pieces of chicken with some with some uh with a with a, a big wedge of baked macaroni and cheese and some <laughs> and some greens. That's that's a that's a side. I mean that's a serving for one person. When in all actuality, that could feed a family of three on one plate. Right. Remember when when uh, the Spaniards came to this side of the earth, our brothers Gad and the other tribes, Reuben, Simeon, the other tribes were here, right? And they were amazed at how much their their soon to be conquerors ate. They said that they would eat enough of, to feed a family of five. That's how much they would eat and drink. Now that's crazy. Okay. But they understood that you don't need to eat massive portions of food. All right. If food wasn't produced as it was, and we would have to go out and actually hunt and gather our own food, we wouldn't be eating as much. And it's a lot of the things that we incorporate in our diets that we wouldn't even eat half for over half of the year. Because if you had to grow it, guess what? You, you wasn't eating it while it was growing. Okay, so we just gotta keep we just gotta keep in mind, man. As we as we prepping our, our spirit, we getting our mind together, man. We studying, we getting an understanding of the scriptures. The Most High is giving us more. He's increasing our knowledge and wisdom. We gotta do our part and make sure that we control our flesh. We 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 have the discipline to control our spirit to get ourselves together. So when we're called to do whatever, we can go unencumbered. We ain't sick, we ain't bent over, we ain't hurting, you know what I'm saying? If we gotta go out, it, hey, my thing is, man, if, if I gotta go out and I gotta teach the people with bad knees, how long are you gonna be able to stand out there and edify the people? Your knees bad. You got a bad back, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Brother was bringing chairs out to camp at one point, just sitting in chairs and stuff, sitting on coolers. So out of shape, man. We gotta we gotta correct ourselves. We gotta put that knife at our neck. <laughs> okay. We gotta control our flesh. We gotta we gotta begin to get in the control of us. Cause if you can't control your 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 food consumption, you damn sure can't control yourself when it really comes to sin. Right? Mm-hmm. All right, uh jump now. Read verse four. Verse four. Nevertheless, these shall ye, ye not eat of them that chew it the cud, and are I mean, are of them that divided the hook, as the camel became become because because he chewed the cud and divided the the hook. Let me read that again. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew it the cud. Or of them that divided the hook, as the camel, because he chewed the cud, but divided not the hook, he is unclean unto you. So that dividing of the hoof, that split within the hoof, they don't have. They have hooves like like uh, what is it like? A, is it like a horse? Yeah. No. They got hooves like horses. Okay. You can't eat horses. You saw tear horses up. Some good red meat. Seen them over there in Italy, man. 
They have a whole horse head. They have a, a carcass of horse that's lit, just hanging there. These people are disgusting. They eat it. Okay. So the camel. Come on. And the coney, because he chewed the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean to you. Read on. And the hare, because he chewed the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. Come on. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chewed not the cud, he is unclean to you. So they gotta make they gotta make that whole criteria. They gotta meet the whole criteria to be clean to us. Our pe majority of our people don't care. They eat any of it, especially the swine. They love that. Okay, and then wonder why they so damn sick. Why they're so bloated and you know what I'm saying? We don't have we don't have those issues. Well, I'm gonna speak for myself. I don't have those issues. I don't know. <laughs> Brothers might have pork on their breath. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> pork here. Hey, brother said, ain't no pork here. That's right. Hey, we going to do turkey bacon and beef bacon. That's it. That's it. Real bacon right here. Even in turkey, that thing. That's it. Damn yeah, right. Come on. Of their flesh, shall you not eat. And, uh, and their carcass, shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. So you can't even touch them. Nonetheless, eat them. You can't even touch the carcass of the other, uh, uh, of the unclean animals. Okay. Come on. These should you eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the water, in the, in the seas and in the rivers, them should you eat. Come on. And all that have not fins, scales in the seas and in the rivers, of, of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they should be an abomination unto you. So anything outside of the criteria that the most I got outlined here, okay, if you eat it, the scripture says that it's an abomination unto you, right? Read, right. Uh, read, we read this yesterday, read Revelations 21, 27. Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, verse 27. And there should in no wise enter into it anything that defileth it, nor whatsoever work it abomination or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So you see that? Anything that makes, make it says anything that what? That is the, and there should ye, there is, and there shall in no wise enter into the, it anything that defileth or whatsoever work it abomination or make it a lie, but they should, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So it says, there shall in no wise enter in anything that defileth, neither whatsoever work it abomination or make it the lie. Okay, so you if you make yourself abominable, you're not going to enter into it, meaning the kingdom. Okay, you're going to miss out on all the grandeur, all the glory that we we, we read about. Um, when was that? This sat this past Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna miss out on that thing, man. The scripture tell you uh, it talks about the cheap things in life. It talks about health. Uh, and the benefits of it. Matter of fact, let's let uh, go to go to Sirach thirty, Sirach thirty, and I think it's fourteen. Sirach chapter thirty, verse fourteen. Better is the poor, being sound and strong and cons uh, constitution, constitution, con constitution, constitution. Mm -hmm. than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. So the scripture says it's better to be poor. Okay, and not have a, a lot, of, not have a lot of food, because the poor they don't have a lot of food, do they? Mm -mm. No, nope. they don't. They they gotta they gotta make make do and get by on what they can. Okay, the scripture says you're better if you're in that situation, being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man. So somebody that can actually afford those things. 
and is afflicted in his body. Because eating in excess will cause you to be afflicted in your body. Okay? Overly consuming unclean things will cause you to be afflicted in your body. Money can't, money can't fix that. Okay, we wonder why our women they get cancer and they get all these different things and they, they pass away from it because they're eating the wrong things or they're eating too much of the wrong things. Or they could be eating clean, clean animals, but eating the defiled things that we have here. We know that our food is defiled. Why would you want to overly consume our defiled foods anyway? You just want to eat enough to sustain you, right? That makes sense. Just eat enough to sustain you. Yeah. Eat until you're <laughs> full, not until you're tired. Not even till you're full. I, I wouldn't eat till you're full. I would eat till you, you're, you're no longer hungry. Because if you eat till you're full, you'll overeat. you overeat. Correct. I have a joke in my rib. I'll be, I'll be like, man, I'm starving, babe. Look, I tell her, look at my ribs. See, my ribs is touching. <laughs> <laughs> man, my ribs ain't never touched. I ain't never been that hungry where, you know what I'm saying? I'm starving. We say that all the time, man, I'm starving. Are you really, do you really know what it means to starve? Do y'all really know what it means to starve? Well, you ain't got nothing. You looking in the refrigerator like it's a TV and ain't nothing on. You ain't got nothing. I'll be <laughs> and you keep going to check and see if there's something in there. Right, you keep going back and forth, ain't nothing in the damn refrigerator. You're like, man. You trying to think about what you can make. You can't make nothing. Ain't nothing in there you can make. Okay. But guess what? That's still more than what some, like, you know, the real impoverished people have. That's still more than what some of the real impoverished people, you know what I'm saying, have to deal with. So we ain't starving. We can miss a meal or two. You know what, you know what frustrates me? When somebody, they... Day of Atonement roll around and people, they act like it's like two months that they got to fast. I'm like, yo, it's a day. <laughs> Come on, sis. Come on, bro. It's a day. Can I have my kids fast? Why not? It's a day. Are they going to die from malnutrition in one day? How long did it take for you to die from uh, lack of water? Can you look it up for me? Yeah, I think it's rules of three. Lack of Actually, water. Lack of water at all. Like no I used water. to watch that uh no water. Well, I used to watch them uh uh, uh that uh Esau got this thing on TV called uh uh uh, uh Survivor. It's, it's like a, a naked survival thing that it, it's a series they come on and they drop them off in the middle of nowhere, like in rain forests and stuff like that with no water or nothing. And I have actually watched them go up to like nine days with no water. But by the time they got there now, they was weak as you could think of by nine days, though. So and that was nine. with no water. All right. Here we go. So about nine Here days, no water? Yeah. Here we go. It's on the screen. Now, and the question that I asked is this. How long does it take to die from thirst? And the answer, yes, I went on to Google, brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and the answer At least you is... Ain't go you ain't Googling scriptures, damn it. You ain't Googling scriptures. That's all that no. matters. No. <laughs> Come on. No, and the, uh, the question that I posed was, again, uh, how long does it take to die from thirst? Approximately 10 days. So they was one day away from the upper room. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> dying from dehydration is generally not uncomfortable once the initial initial feelings of thirst subside. If you stop eating and drinking, death can occur as early as a few days. Though for most people, approximately ten days is the norm. You know, you know why I say approximately ten days is the norm, because we have so much stored up fat within us, our bodies can eat that. It can, it can live off that for quite some time. Some of mm -hmm. us can, hey, you probably can, hey, some of us can probably fast for 60 days and be fine. Yeah. <laughs> no food. Yeah, it does say the process can take as long as several weeks. Hey, you could probably, hey, you could probably fast for a whole doggone 30 days and be good. 
all of the strength that our body has stored up so much fat, so much uh, so much carbs and, 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 and stuff like that from the things that we didn't ate. Okay, you, and most of us, I'm holding mine right up, right, right in the front too, right in the front. Pulling me, that thing be pulling me, bro. You ain't by yourself. I'm telling. <laughs> hey, we, hey, we need to, we need to do some fasting. I ain't, you know, I ain't talking just, just for, just for our body, but you know, what I'm saying, just to get in control of our spirit, get, get in control of our flesh, show it who's boss. You know what I'm saying? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta regain the power within our vessel. We control it. All right, we gotta regain that thing. What you got, Mike? No, it just when you said that we need to fast, and you know, we were talking about the food that we got th stored up. Um, I was on YouTube uh, a few days ago, looking up things up under diabetes, and this man was on there talking about, you know, the reason why. People can't get rid of diabetes, you know what I'm saying? That they actually don't be treating the diabetes. And, you know, when you said fast, it made me thought about that. The man was saying if you want to get rid of diabetes, just fast. Just fast. Get your sugar level dropped down so the body could burn the sugar that's in it and the fat of your body could be burnt off on its own and your cholesterol that will burn. It would drop all your health issues and start to get you back on the right track if we just went with no eating anything or drinking anything to do like what you're saying, allow the body to eat what was stored up inside of us. A lot of people just don't know. It will help them get off like the pills for diabetes and high blood pressure and a whole lot more other things. But I was just sitting on there watching that when you said that we just went in fast offer you know the, the food that's stored up in us we a lot of us just don't know that's how a lot of us can start to get back here that's why dr Savio was so uh popular because he did the, what, the, the three months with no eating no food it was just water and i think a, a slice of bread or two a day and he did that for like 90 days or something like that and he got his well, body back on health well they just they just uh a lot of these these people it's a guy uh he talk about the snake juice diet, where he just uh, is water, potassium, soda, uh, a little baking soda, and some salt. Uh, that's all you drink for like you know, a couple of weeks to get into ketosis or something like that, and it curves. He was like, they they do all these these findings. It says it curves your appetite, it curves your cravings. Um, your addictions, things of that nature. So you smoke cigarettes, it'll, you know, it'll curb that, uh, that, that addiction for that. You'll be able to control it. All they doing is stealing what the Bible is. <laughs> All they doing is stealing what's written here because um, fasting, fasting and things of that nature would allow you to be able to control your impulses to eat to do whatever. Remember, during fasting, you abstain from sex and things of that nature. Uh, you abstain from eating. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a true fast, nothing enters into your mouth. Okay, they do like the halfway fast. But uh, if you go by the example of Mother Judith, she fasted all the time. Right? She fasted all the time except high holy days and the Sabbath. You know what I'm saying? It's massive benefits to it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And that will equal good health. It will bring forth good health to us instead of just consuming so much. But you don't even, listen, you don't even need the intermittent fasting and things like that as, as a diet, so to speak, if you eat in moderation. That's the point. That's the, that's the key point. But it, it is benefits. It's massive benefits in uh, fasting because it brings forth clarity. Uh, it's, it's discipline. You know what I'm saying? It takes consistency. It teaches you to uh, not to give in to your impulses. So it's a lot of benefits to fast. A lot of benefits that they're trying to. They're just finding out now, or they're trying to make into a market to sell people stuff. You get what I'm saying? But hey, the benefits is already there. Our brothers, our, our four parents, they running mountains like 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 those, and you know what I'm saying, fighting battles 
on end for days and weeks and you know what i'm saying like we couldn't do that now imagine swinging a damn gun sword two times to chop somebody man please you'd be to <laughs> we'll be told the hell we'll be the worst dead on army ever we ain't equipped for no battle we not equipped for the war we ain't equipped for anything okay we we equipped to walk up the steps and get tired that's what we all equipped for for the most part we got hey we got the biggest weapon in front of us is our belly <laughs> <laughs> Why? While uh, brother Michael was uh, talking about diabetes, I looked up some some statistics, statistics and numbers from the uh, American Diabetes Association. Do you mind if I share them? Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna grab some. If you got no, if you I, got I, some, I got good. some because uh, we were t we were talking and discussing about numbers, you know, and and it's and it's good to um, it's good to show them. I mean, obviously, this is nothing that you know is is hidden. So if you don't mind, I'd like to show them. Yeah, go ahead, bro. Oh, praises be to the most high. All right. And they're on screen now. And this is uh, um, from the American Diabetes Association website. And this is diabetes by race or ex ethnicity. Uh, the rate of diagnosed diabetes in, in adults by race et ethnic background are 7.4% of non-Hispanic whites. That's you. Those are your Edomites. Uh, 8% of Asian Americans, your Moabites. Uh, and here we go. Here comes us, right? 12.1% 12 12 of Hispanics, 12.7% of non-Hispanic Blacks, and 15.1% of American Indian, Alaska Native. So who, who uh, and then let me bring it down to the cost of diabetes. It's a three three hundred and twenty seven billion dollar industry two hundred two hundred and thirty seven dollars a billion was for direct medical costs and ninety billion was in reduced productivity so who are the who who is you know ESO most of the getting this money from as it seems from us so That's there are so, so so you mean tell me we can buy because of our insatiable eating or the eating of wrong things, we get diabetes and we combine to pay 300 and something billion dollars. This was updated in, you know, March 22nd of 2018, but uh, this is their latest update. But yes, we're, we're giving them that much money in, you know, in, in, in the cause of diabetes. So if we can control our mouth, there are many, many benefits. Oh man! At, at least three hundred and twenty-seven billion. <laughs> so imagine, and, and and that's crazy that you know the so-called natives, their their rate of diabetes is is way more than both. Right. Judah, you know what I'm saying? The the, the so-called blacks and Hispanics. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? That statistic right there is just, that, that that number right there is just crazy. And think about this. They don't try to cure diabetes. No. Is there a cure for diabetes? No. No, they're, they're just trying to treat it because obviously that's where the money is at. Right. They sell you insulin, mm -hmm. okay, to sustain you if you're, uh, and not to cure you. So fasting, it's been proven that fasting, it can, you know, I think not type 2, but type 1 diabetes if you, if you fast, if you uh, get your diet right. You know what I'm saying? You can um, you can actually get rid of it, uh, but I don't know about type two. That's the one. But actually, that's that's actually what I was watching on. That's what made me went to talking about it because uh, that's what I was watching it on. Um, matter of fact, it was a Chinese guy, a Moabite guy. He was talking about it, and he was showing how that they don't treat the diabetes; they treat some totally opposite. They don't really treat the diabetes so actually the medicine that they give you it actually caused the diabetes to get worse he said it was just he made it he gave a, a good uh, analogy of it he was like uh just say if you got a, a, a infection on your leg and it, it, it's real big sore he said so they don't give you nothing to treat that big infected store on your leg he said but then you catch a fever from the infection 
He said, so what they do, the medicine that they give you, treat the fever. It don't treat the infected sore. So it caused the sore to get bigger, and they just constantly focus on the fever. He said, so the medicine they give you for diabetes type 2, because that's what, like I said, that's what I was watching on uh, type 2 diabetes. And he said, so when they give you the medicine, it don't treat the diabetes. It treats the whole opposite. And that's what caused the people to get worse. And that's why he was saying if people was just to fast, if this was to fast, that their bodies started eating off all the stuff that's stored up in it, they could get their health back on track. But by them not knowing this or not being told this, they just going to depend on the pill or that shot that they constantly give them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And uh, that's what made me say it. So it don't, so it don't cure anything. They don't cure anything. Pharmaceutical. No, nah, they don't, don't cure. cure anything. They just sustain you. They just give you drugs to sustain you, your current uh, health or to make it worse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to take it upon ourselves because we're the ones affected by it. Numbers don't lie. You know what I'm saying? We're the ones affected by it. We got to make those changes. Okay. When it comes to obesity, childhood obesity, when it comes to childhood diabetes, things of that nature, we, we lead, we're, we're leading the earth <laughs> in regards to those numbers. Okay. So you got to change that thing. You got to eat right. You got to eat good. You know what I'm saying? Eat according to the laws, but eat in moderation. Okay. And get your little exercise in, get some stretches in, things of that nature. It's all right. It's okay. Okay. All right, y'all brothers got anything? Nah, I ain't got anything, my brother. Since a real may clarification that type two is the one that can't be controlled. Type two diabetes. It you say it can or can't? Can. She put it so in, you, on, on Facebook. So you can control it? Well, the one they treat. Okay. I don't know what's on my aunt had. I know it took her legs. Then it took her life. <laughs> that thing was crazy, man. Mm -hmm. That thing is crazy. Our people, they suffer from that. Hey, I got it in my fam. I know. I don't know if it's like hereditary and then like that, but you know what I mean, I, I got to make some changes. So, and and you know, the crazy part about it is we pull off the meat, the fried food, all the cholesterol, do some exercise. We'll be all right. We'll be all right. We just don't, them the things we don't want to do. If a person tell you they got diabetes, I guarantee you, they still eating sweet cookies, a little bit of piece of sweet potato pie. They still using a little bit of this and getting a little bit of that, or stuff that they don't need, <laughs> that they really don't need, yeah. you know? All right, so uh, that's all we got, man. Hey, we got we got to change, we got to change the spirit and the flesh. Got to get it, we got to get it together, man. You know, had a little epiphany today. We put put together a little class based upon that. But uh, uh, next next class uh, we got what Thursday? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we'll uh, we'll have next class Thursday again. If y'all have any questions throughout the course of the week. In regards to uh, uh, any classes or anything like that that you wanna you want us to go over, any topics you wanna discuss, feel free to uh, shoot us an email at asavisual info at asavisual dot org. Um, shoot that shoot an email there. We'll definitely uh, you know let one of the brothers take take a shot at breaking down one of those classes and you know bringing forth that edification. But we got we got a lot of topics to cover, a lot of topics to cover, a lot of things, a lot of interesting things uh, that have been brought to light, old doctrines that we you know we got to speak about, things of that nature. So I look forward to that thing, man. We're gonna we're gonna learn a lot, uh, especially before we uh, make that trek to head back to the streets. Make sure we on point, right? Yes, sir. That's what it's about. Uh, any questions? We got any questions online? No questions 
on Facebook. No question. All right, so low as well. See you, see you, brothers and sisters, on Thursday. Peace and blessings, family. Shalom. Sign Christ bless you. Shalom, family. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Sign Christ bless. Sign Christ bless.